Hi guys, I just wanted to come on here for a sec and uh, just talk about what's going on with my uh, food journey. I applied for Fair Start in Seattle, um, which is, it's a company that basically real uh, rehabilitates people that are addicts, homeless. They teach uh, people's skills on how to cook they used to have a restaurant before covid i've known about these guys the whole time i've been in seattle uh which is nine years in april so i'm gonna be hopefully doing prep work for that with potential to be an instructor at some point but i'm still doing the security stuff whether or not it's working at the nightclub that i'm working at on the weekends or Sam's on the Hill, which as long as I'm living in Seattle, I'm going to be working at Sam's. So that's not going anywhere. But uh, I, what I like about food outreach is the food is donated most of the time. So, you know, you don't, the cost, you know, you didn't pay for it. That doesn't mean you should waste it, but you have more creative control with it. You can do more with it. You can take more risks with food, which I like a lot. Taking risks with food is, you know, that's why I like cooking. Like trial and error, what works, what doesn't, flavor profiles. Um, so, yeah, I would love, if I was an instructor for cooking, I would get a bunch of people. Like I would, I would get the people and they... Um, Losing my train of thought when I'm recording this video. I'm doing all this in one take. So I'm trying to collect my thoughts as I'm going. I would want to have a list of ingredients ready for who I'm instructing. And I would love them to just take 30 minutes, come together, make a plan for what we we're going to do the next day. And then I would go home and I would get whatever ingredients and I would do something my way. And the next day I would, I would do mine. They would do theirs. Um, you know, and I'm, and that's another thing with food outreach. You don't have to be super critical. Your knife cuts don't look good. So be it. You know, you're, you're not fast enough. So be it. I would rather you be slow with a knife and be com um, confident with it than to speed up real fast and hack your hand because you're not doing the claw properly. So yes, um, I really just want to, that's the only, the only way I want to do food again is by helping others. By, you know, if it's prepping food for homeless people's lunches, that's what I want to do. You know, I'm not doing it for money. I'm not doing it for glory. I really, really want to change the world how I can by food. You know, everybody needs to eat. And there's nothing greater than coming together and eating one of your favorite meals with each other. And also, too, with food, it... There's so many endless opportunities of being able to cook and technique, you know, there's always something to learn. Me, fine dining is not my thing because fine dining is just, to be honest, it's, it's kind of our archaic in a way. It's like uh, back in the day of like the king, you know, having feasts. So I don't, I don't think you need to have super fancy food in order to bring together people. And I think fancy food um, sometimes makes people afraid of food because we, expensive ingredients. If I work in a kitchen in a high-end restaurant, say if I'm working at Canalis in Seattle, to go there... Two people, 
you're going to probably spend about $400 to eat there. And so if I'm working in the kitchen there and I mess up and this is, this is with me, he's saying, I have the skills of working at Catalyst. Do I have the skills of working at Catalyst? Absolutely not. Uh, they would not hire me. And that's okay, though, because I don't really want to work in the high dining, like I just said earlier. But I would be a little nervous. I would be really nervous working in a kitchen like that. Because that was not my upbringing at all. I grew up really poor, didn't have much food, grew, had government cheese. My grandmother, I remember she would bring over Taco Bell when I was a kid. Ate a lot of fast food, which, you know, from the Midwest, eating fast food is it's a big way of life in the Midwest, though, because it's affordable, it's cheap, it's fast, you know. For you can wait for food longer than you should sometimes in Seattle for food. But it's the Uber drivers and uh, all the food delivery have uh, kind of screwed up the industry because you're cooking so much for the go orders. And, you know, you don't even know if the food's going to be warm by the time you get to it. You know, you might not even get the food. And, you know, the Uber drivers that come in my work, you know, they're... They have, you know, they have a job to do. I get it, but they get really frustrated with how they have to um, wait for the food because it says it's ready on the phone, but the cook might be backed up because the cook's not only cooking for the Uber orders, he's cooking for all the people in the bar. So if we're busy, then we get backed up. And so, you know, they try. They're the kitchen workers at my work, they're amazing. We have the best kitchen one of the best kitchen staffs on in seattle at our locations for sure anyways guys um it's a little while i've already talked for seven minutes <laughs> so yeah i just want to do these videos they're gonna get better as i go i'm not trying to get really fancy production value i'm not trying to be famous i'm not trying to make money off this If I do end up making money off of YouTube videos, I'm definitely donating at least 50% of what I make to probably, I haven't come up with a plan yet for it. I would love feedback, comments, like, subscribe, please, please share this. You know, it takes a village and I was put on this earth to try to make changes I'm really, uh, at this point, I feel like food outreach is my calling. Um, I haven't really talked about this too much either, but there's a possibility of moving to Vietnam. And if I go there, I would love to learn the culture, the Vietnamese people. I would love to just embrace their cuisine. Um, it's really French inspired. Um, I, for you guys that don't know me, I have a culinary degree from La Cordon Bleu, um, from Seattle when they were here, uh, all the North American, uh, locations shut down, uh, because of for-profit education. It was a scam in a lot of ways. I paid for it with my GI Bill. Also, for you guys that don't know me that are watching this, I also served in the Marine Corps after high school I uh went out to New York a year before 9-11 and then three weeks after it happened so it it had a profound impact on my life and I am just grateful that I get to do this opportunity uh to talk to you guys if you guys have any questions or concerns or comments please do like this is a I've been doing TikTok videos for a while, so that's, uh, I'm fairly well. I got almost eight, a little under 8,000 followers on that. So I want to, I want to do it more on YouTube. I want to blow this up on here. Um, I just want to end this guys. You guys are not alone. You guys, if you need anything, I'm here for you. Please don't feel like you're struggling alone and God bless. Thank you guys. Peace.